Good morning. It's still pretty early here and I wanted to show you everything that I got this weekend at the farmer's market by my parents' house because my plan is to pick at it throughout the day and hopefully get a good majority of it preserved because I don't want it to go bad. Um, so that's my plan for the day. I want to show you everything I got and then we'll just spend the day together. Well, here's my goodies. Everything in this basket and those green tomatoes are from my garden, but everything else I got from the farmer's market. So I got about 25-ish tomatillos to make some kind of like salsa verde or something with those. I got some banana peppers and jalapenos. Now I know I have a lot of jalapenos coming out of the garden, but they're pretty small and I wanted to get the bigger ones because I want to try freezing jalapeno poppers so I can kind of like pull those out and have them as an appetizer easier than making them all for when I need them. So that's my plan with these. I got a lot of peaches because I want to make peach salsa and I want to just have canned peaches on hand. So got a lot of those. I got some red onions. I also got one of those big 50 pound bags of white onions because my onions are growing, but they're not growing nearly as big as I wanted them to be. So in order to have some onions in storage and use them for some of these recipes that I want to use, um, I went ahead and got a big bag of them. And here's my favorite part. I got almost 50 ears of corn and this whole bushel of green beans that are kind of just like sticking out of the sides of it but I'm really excited to open that and see all of them inside of there and just see how many I got and then corn if you don't know corn's my favorite vegetable so I'm planning on just boiling like blanching this and then putting it into freezer bags like the kernels so that's it that's what I got to get to preserving today so wish me luck So blanching the corn is a good idea before freezing just so that it's cooked a little bit and it doesn't get too mushy in the freezer. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just blanching for, um, you know, I'm boiling the corn for about four minutes and then putting it into the ice bath to stop the cooking process. And then, you know, I'll take it off the cob and put it into food saver bags to put in the freezer.
<gasps> well, I'm done with the corn. I got 16 bags of corn kernels. It was a lot of work, especially with the food processor, the, the food saver it was not my friend. It was not sealing correctly. I had to go through a lot of work to make sure that they all sealed, but I think they're all good. So now I gotta put them in the freezer. So I just put like, I don't know, a couple servings in a bag. It's just me and my husband. So we'll probably go through this with a little bit extra for a dinner. So I'm really excited to start kind of saving these up and uh, go through these in the winter. So awesome. One project done. I got the corn done. Now I'm really excited to move on to the peaches. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Before I move on to peaches, I need to clean everything up because I tend to make a mess. And if I don't clean it up as I go, I get really overwhelmed and stressed out. That's also why I'm not planning on doing more than just one thing at a time because with canning especially, it's so fast and like kind of overwhelming for me. So I just wanna focus on it and kind of slow down and enjoy it. So I'm gonna do one thing at once. But before I get to peaches, I think I'm gonna save the corn cobs. I've seen that you can make like corn cob jelly with it. Um, I don't know. Leave in the comments if you've made it before and if you would make it again. I might make it just because I have these corn cobs that I'm not gonna do anything with. So getting another product out of it would be really cool. But if I'm never gonna eat the corn cob jelly, I don't wanna go through all the effort to make it. Um, I looked it up, it says it's kind of sweet, like honey, and this corn is really sweet. So I bet that it would be good. I just don't know how I'd use it. Um, so yeah, if I do that, I'll save it for another day. I'll just put those in the fridge for now. Um, so I'll be waiting to hear some comments if you think it's worth it or not, or if I should just compost those. All right, the kitchen is cleaned up. Well, all the dishes are cleaned and ready for me to use them again. Um, so for the peach salsa, I'm using the ball book um, and that recipe. It says I need six cups of chopped, pitted and peeled peaches. And then all the peaches that I have left after that, depending on how much six cups is, I don't know how many I'm gonna have left. If I have a lot left, I probably won't can them all in just slices, but my plan is to just can peach slices. Um, which I'm pretty sure is in this book too. So yeah, we'll do that. I think I'm ahead of myself. So I have seen people in order to peel the peaches, they like blanch them and then put them in cold water and the skin just comes right off. So I guess I should do that. gotta watch a video really quick. Okay, yes, I am going to blanch them just a little bit to get the skins off easier, and then we'll figure out what we have from there. I'll start kind of dividing them up into peach slices and six cups of diced for the peach salsa. I wouldn't know how to do anything without you two. So yeah, I'm just getting some water and then we'll be ready. So here I'm just putting the peaches into boiling water for only one or two minutes and then putting them into the bowl. I'm not putting them into ice water this time, I'm just letting them stay a little bit warm so that those skins slide off. And this turns out to work really well, so definitely a good idea if you're trying to take the skins off of peaches. And it didn't really like cook the peach too much. I don't think it was mushy. I tasted them afterwards and it still tasted really good. So if you're doing anything with peaches, this is a good little trick to try if you don't want that skin on there.
All right, so I was reading over the recipe and I have bad news. I don't have cilantro, which is needed for the peach salsa. So I'm hoping that I can just can it without the cilantro and add cilantro to it when we pull it out to use it. I'm thinking that might be nice anyway because having like fresh cilantro on top of it might be really nice. I'm hoping that doesn't mess up the recipe at all. I, I don't think that should matter for canning. I know if you change like the vinegar and like acidity and sweetness and all that, like that can change things, but cilantro shouldn't. Um, I'm a little bummed, but not bummed enough to go get it. So we'll see, I don't know. That's how we're gonna have to do it. All right, so let's see. If we can't pit and skin these peaches. Oh, the skins definitely come off. So that's cool. Oh man, okay, so that didn't. Hmm. All right, how do I get the pit out? Okay, so these must be clean peaches. I don't think they really want to get rid of that pit. Um, so I might just have to cut more around it, which is fine. All right, so we need half a cup of vinegar in here. Oh, I need to measure them. Oh, man. Okay. A few things that I wanted to pop in here and clarify are the difference between the cling and the freestone peaches. So those are two different types of peaches. The cling, like it sounds, the pit sticks to the meat of the peach and it's harder to get that out where the freestone kind of just comes off a little bit easier and you can pull that pit out. So that's why I was a little bit frustrated here and had to cut around the pit more than I would have hoped to, but it ended up working out just fine. Another thing with the vinegar, um, by putting the peaches in the vinegar while you're working with them, it prevents them from browning. So that was why I had the vinegar in the pot and then switched it over to the measuring bowl just so that I could make sure all the peaches were staying fresh and you know a good color and they weren't gonna turn brown on me. So that's a little bit more into what I was doing here. All right, so I got all six cups of peaches diced up. 
and in the vinegar. Um, that wasn't really that many peaches. I still have a lot left. So I'll be able to can some slices. Although I was really hoping that they'd be easier to get the pit out of. Um, so that's just a bummer, but they still taste really good. Um, so next to this, I put it on the stove and add some red onion, jalapeno, a bell pepper, cilantro, honey, garlic, cumin, and cayenne. So I'm gonna do that. I just ran out to the garden for this pepper and four jalapenos. So that was fun. Kind of makes up for the lost cilantro. I'm leaving the seeds in two jalapenos, but I took two of the seeds out because I'll let there be a little bit of heat, but I don't want too much. I want to still be able to enjoy it. So I got my peppers. All right, so now we're adding two tablespoons of honey. one clove of garlic, one and a half teaspoons of ground cumin, And then one teaspoon of cayenne. All right, so now we are bringing this to a boil, letting it simmer for five minutes and then packing it in jars. So while I've been making this, I've had my jars in hot soapy water in the sink. So I'm just gonna clean those up, rinse them out, put some hot water in them. This is actually water bath, so I'm gonna get that ready too. And I'll bring you back in when it's ready to go into jars. This is smelling so good. I gotta show you. Yum, yum, yum. I can't wait to taste it.
I just have to taste it. It's probably really hot though. Oh yeah, I can taste the jalapenos. Woo! All right, so we're actually supposed to be going for half an inch of headspace. So what I'm gonna do is take some out of this one and make sure the other three are at half an inch and then we'll just keep this one in the fridge and eat that one this week. It feels really silly to run that whole water bath canner with for three jars, but I don't know. You gotta do what you gotta do. None of the other things I wanna can tonight are water bath. So um, yeah, once that comes up to a boil, it's gonna boil for 15 minutes. Actually, the recipe was for the half pint jars and the pear recipe says that both half pint and pint jars should be at 20 minutes. So I'm gonna do it for 20 minutes just to be safe because I am doing a bigger jar than what they called for. Um, so boiling, 20 minutes, then we'll let it sit and take it out. Mm. You like it? Ooh, that's spicy. Yeah, it's got that's a little good. bit of kick. Yeah. All right, while that is water bath canning, I'm going to figure out the rest of these peaches. So I think I'm just gonna slice them up and put them into jars to raw pack peach slices with the syrup. So I'm gonna do that. While you watch me slice these peaches, I just wanted to mention the dicer attachment that I had on my KitchenAid that you saw earlier in the video. I really wanted to use that. I actually just got it from Brad as an early birthday gift. So I was excited to use it. I thought that it would work well for dicing the peaches and you know, the onion, the jalapeno, everything that went into that peach salsa. But you know, I should have planned a little bit beforehand and made up my mind about what I was gonna do because like I mentioned, canning and you know, trying these recipes for the first time is still so new to me that I'm trying to, you know, go into it calmly and not get overwhelmed. And that doesn't always work out. So adding the dicer to the mix and trying to figure out how to dice the peaches right into the vinegar or keep them in vinegar and then take them out to dice them. I just wasn't sure how that was all gonna work. So I didn't end up using it and I just diced them by hand but I'm really hoping to show you more about this dicer in a future video and use it for something cool because it definitely is an awesome little gadget to have. And I'm so excited that Brad got that for me for my birthday. All right, so I got all of my peach sliced up and in these jars, and that was all the rest of the peaches. So they fit into six, which is pretty cool. I mixed up a light syrup, so it's a little bit less sugar and um, compared to the water for like heavier syrups. Uh, the peaches are super sweet, so I don't think we need too much, but I'm um, just gonna put this on top of the peaches. Love 
All right, again, we want a half inch of headspace, so I'm just gonna debubble them and make sure we're there. I lied before when I said that nothing else was water bath canned. I thought these peaches were supposed to be pressure canned and it turns out that they're not. Um, but 25 minutes, so we wouldn't have been able to do them together anyway. So I'm not that mad about it, but got this ready to go. They need a little bit more water and then we'll start boiling. Well, I had really high hopes today that I would get all of this stuff preserved. Um, I of course had to work like my day job so that I didn't, you know, I didn't get a whole day of canning under my belt. But I got what I was able to do done, so I'm happy. Um, I'm gonna get these going. I'll put a, a quick clip at the end of them coming out so you can see what the peaches look like. And I think tomorrow or later this week, I'm going to be canning the green beans and I don't know, everything else I've got around here, so. Thanks for coming along with me today. I guess there will be a part two to preserving this little abundance that I showed you. Um, and we're gonna eat dinner. So we'll see you on the next one.